Anyone with any kind of income can build wealth if they apply the right strategy. A janitor in Vermont built an $8 million fortune without anyone around him knowing it. Reed, a retired gas station attendant and janitor in Vermont, passed away in 2015. Nothing about his life or death was extraordinary, except for the fact that after he died, his estate was revealed to be worth $8 million. If a janitor can do it, then the answer is yes, anyone can do it. The question is only at what speed and at what sacrifice are you willing to make the hard decisions? Now let's start and get into the three steps for how to build wealth in Canada and make sure that you stick with me all the way till the end because many people, especially newcomers, do not know about the third step yet. Step number one is to maximize your savings, which is the difference between what you earn and what you spend. Very, very basic, but yet few people manage to do this. In order to spend much less than you earn, it's not sufficient to just save $10 here and there. You need to make basic lifestyle changes and decisions. One example to save more money is to reduce your expenses by downsizing your accommodation. And I know this is not something that people want to hear, but that is the reality because just think of it, what is your biggest expense? So if right now you're renting a three bedroom apartment, but you really, really want to save and start investing, then you may need to consider to downsize to something smaller, maybe just for the next five years or so. But what if right now you are already living in a one bedroom apartment? Can you still downsize? During the first five years that I lived here in Canada, both my husband and I, we live in a 300 square feet small a studio. We had the money to rent a one or even two bedroom apartment, but it was a conscious decision to live in a cheap studio. And by doing that, we managed to save so much money. Another example is to ditch your car in favor of public transportation. Again, most people will revolt against this, no way, I need my car. But if you really want to free up some money and start investing, then you may want to consider it. If the first two things don't work for you at all, then there's still another thing that you can do, which is to either not eat out at all or strictly limit the number of times that you eat out. Whatever lifestyle habit you decide to change, the hard truth is this. Until you start to spend much, much less than you earn, you will not build any wealth. The other thing that you need to try to do is to increase your earnings. And here are some examples for how you can do that. You can try and get a raise even if you stay in the same position. Or if you think that you are due for a promotion, try and get a promotion and with that a salary increase. And if it doesn't work out in your current company, then look outside. Try to find another job that pays you more adequately. And another thing of course that you can do is to start building a side hustle that in time will generate some additional income for you. Honestly, in order to save more money, I think that you need to do a combination of both spending less and also to start earning more. And I know guys, it's not easy, but if you really want to make it your goal to start saving money, investing and building wealth in the long term, then you can do it. You just need the determination and the focus on your goal. Now let's go on to step number two to build wealth in Canada, which is to invest a difference. Let's say that you did such a great job and you managed to save between five to $10,000 each year. Do not just leave that money in your savings account. According to this annual survey here conducted by Polara Strategic Insights, it found that millennials are more likely to hold savings in cash, 57%, compared to Gen Xers and boomers who are more likely to put their savings into investments, 54% and 64% respectively. So don't do this mistake of not investing because you will be losing out on so much growth. Nowadays, it's so easy to start investing even with just $50 or $100. You don't need to to wait until you have thousands of dollars. Online investment platforms allow you to sign up within just a few days and then you can start investing right away. And even if you're a beginner, you don't need to worry because you can invest at your own pace while learning more about investing. And one trading platform you can start investing on is Mumu. Mumu, an online trading platform based in Silicon Valley, is used by over 21 million people. You can start with any amount as there is no account minimum. While many other brokerages charge $5 or more per order, Mumu charges $1.49 Canadian dollars per trade for Canadian stocks and ETFs and $1.99 US dollars per trade for US stocks and ETFs. And for this low fee, you'll get a lot of free features through Mumu's app, things that many other trading platforms 
platforms don't have or charge extra for. Comprehensive market information and tools, including level 2 market data for the US and Canada. There is a paper trading feature for which you'll get $1 million in virtual money to practice trading with real-time quotes and professional tools. And you'll also get access to over 200 free courses and Moomoo's online community to seek help from when you're stuck. And yes, in Canada, Moomoo Financial Canada is a member of Ciro and member of the CIPF or the Canadian Investor Protection Fund. Great thing also, starting January 2024, you can also open RSP and TFSA accounts with Moomoo. And if you sign up with Moomoo before December 31st Eastern Time, you can get welcome rewards of up to $1,520 plus an extra $10 cashback during Christmas season. My referral link is down in the descriptions below. Note that in case you sign up, I will be eligible for a small commission. So thank you Moomoo for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now back to the video. Now, just going back to those 57% millennials who keep their money in cash, I was thinking, why would you do that? But then I reminded myself that I too used to be like that. When I arrived in Canada, I had all my money in my savings account and I knew that I needed to invest it, but I just didn't do it because I was busy with so many other things. But if you don't invest, you'll lose out in the long run. Albert Einstein famously referred to compounding interest as the eighth wonder of the world. If you just invested $8,000 per year, then just guess how much money you would have after 10 years. And for that, let's use this calculator here. Let's plug in the numbers. Let's say that your starting amount is zero. You have not invested anything yet. Your duration of investment is 10 years and your return rate is on average 5%. Even if you started out with $0 but invested $8,000 per year and your money grew at 5% each year compounded annually, then after 10 years your money would grow to $100,623.14. Is it an awful lot? No, but is it better than nothing? Yes, definitely. But one question you might have is, is the assumption of 5% realistic? Personally, I think it is. Let's take, for example, the S&P 500, which is a stock market index tracking the stock performance of the 500 of the largest companies listed on stock exchanges in the United States. The index, the S&P 500, has returned a historic annualized average return of around 10.13% since its 1957 inception through the end of 2022. And of course, in the short term, the index has fluctuated up and down, up and down. And during some years, people would have experienced losses if they sold their investment. So an index having an average return of, in this case, for example, 10.13% does not mean that your investments will grow 10.13% each and every year. But over the long run, over a very long time, it tends to smooth out towards this average. And yes, even if you're in Canada, you can still invest into the S&P 500. And you do that via ETFs or exchange traded funds. One of these ETFs is what's called the VFV, which is the code, the ticker for Vanguard S&P 500 index, which tracks the S&P 500 index. Now, just as a comparison, what happens if you just left that money in your savings account? Now, I know at the moment, there are plenty of savings accounts that offer a very high interest, for example, 2.5% per year. But as many of you guys know, this rate is only possible because of the currently high interest rate overall, because the BOC or Bank of Canada rate is at its high of 5%. But once that rate drops, which is very likely to happen in the coming years, then savings rates and also GIC rates will drop. But let's just say for the sake of this example that you put $8,000 per year into a savings account, which pays you 2% over, let's say, 10 years. How much money would you have in that case after 10 years? So after 10 years, you would have $87,597.77. And that is less than in our earlier example where we invested it and got an average return of 5%. Now, let me just give you another example to demonstrate how powerful compounding is. Now, let's just say that you managed to invest $12,500 per year and you get an annual average return of 8%. After 10 years of investing that money, you would arrive at $181,082.03. And again, of course, there is no guarantee whatsoever for how much your investment will grow or not grow or make a loss. 
But if we look at historical data, it shows that the likelihood of your cash growing if you invested is much higher than if you just put it into a savings account or stashed it as cash. So if you want to build wealth, start investing right now, no matter how small the amount. When I finally did it, it felt so good to see my money go over the years without me doing much except for being disciplined in investing regular amounts each month into just a few investment products that I chose. So watching my money grow from month to month motivated me to try even more to find more ways to be frugal, more ways that I could save money. I tried to save a little here and there, make some lifestyle changes, eat out less, cook home a bit more, watch out for discounted groceries, etc. just so that I could invest an additional $50 or $100 that month. But not only that, not only did I try to spend less, but I also tried to continuously find ways to earn more, an additional $300 or $500 each month. So as you see, building wealth is not about the technicalities, but rather about mindset and psychology. But now that we're talking specifically about investing in Canada, there's one more piece of the whole puzzle that is so important if you want to speed up your process of growing your wealth in Canada. And that brings me to step number three, which is free money. What? Hold on a second. Free money? What do you mean by free money? Some of you will already know where I'm going with this which is to optimize your RRSB contributions and also make use of your employer's RRSB matching if they have that. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this yet, I will explain how crucial it is to building wealth in Canada. And for those of you who already know everything about this, just treat this as a small reminder to actually take advantage of this free money. Now, let's talk a bit about the RSB first and how contributing towards it can get you free money. So an RSB is a registered retirement savings savings plan. It's a savings plan that is registered with the government. To simplify it, an RSP is not an investment per se, but you can imagine it as sort of a pot in which you can put money and to which certain benefits apply, in this case, tax benefits. Any income that you contribute to your RSP is tax sheltered, meaning that that money will not be subject to tax. Now, let's just do a number example. Let's just say that you earn $60,000 and just for simplicity's sake for this example, let's say that you pay 20% in taxes. That's not the exact percentage, by the way. If you do not put anything into your RSP, then that means that you will pay approximately $12,000 in taxes and would have $48,000 left. Now, if you take $5,000 of your $60,000 income and put that $5,000 into an RSP, that means that that $5,000 is not taxed. So your taxable income, all other things remaining equal would be $55,000 or $60,000 minus $5,000. And if we apply 20% to that, 20% times $55,000 equals $11,000. So you would pay $1,000 less in taxes just by contributing your money into your RSP. To calculate it in another way, roughly that $5,000 that you do not pay taxes on, you save 5,000 times 20% equals $1,000. Now just imagine how much more money you could save if you could put even more money into your RSP. If you put $10,000 into your RSP, then you would save approximately $2,000. Then that would be $2,000 in savings. And yeah, that is free money. Now I need to know that there are limits as to how much money you can contribute to your RSP. It is not limitless, but I will not go into further details. If you want to learn more about the basics of RSP, then you can check out this video up here where I talk specifically about RSP. And now let's talk about the second way that you can get free money, which is through employer RSP matching. So what is RSP matching? RSP matching is when your employer opens a group RSP and matches your contributions to it. Most companies who offer this kind of matching would match your contributions at 50 to 100%. So if, for example, you contribute $2,000 towards that group RSP and your employer matches 100%, that means that they will contribute another $2,000, which doubles your money. And it's truly free because you don't need to do anything else besides signing up for it and contributing your money. But note that here too, there is a limit. You cannot just contribute any amount that you want to that RSP. There would usually be a limit as to how much you can contribute to that group RSP, which is usually expressed as a percentage of your 
salary. For example, 2% of your salary or 5% of your salary. It really depends on your company. If the limit is, let's say, 3% of your salary and your salary is $60,000 per year, that means that you can contribute a maximum of $1,800. And then if your employer matches 100% of your contributions, that means that they'll contribute another $1,800 and you'll end up with $3,600. But note that not all companies in Canada offer RSB matching. So when you're on job hunt, when you're deciding which company to work for, this is a main benefit to consider in your overall compensation package. If right now your employer offers RSB matching, but you're not contributing to it, then you're really leaving money on the table. Now, what about debt? You might be asking at this point, why have I not addressed debt? Certainly, paying off debt is an important part of building wealth. As long as you have debt, that will hold you back from building wealth. Because your wealth, in other words, your net worth equals your assets minus your liabilities, which is your debt. So to build wealth in the long run, you really need to start working on paying off the debt. But if you're new here in Canada, try and not get into debt in the first place. And it's actually possible. And I know having a mortgage is unavoidable if you want to own a home in Canada, but I think that having a mortgage, that kind of debt is a bit different from regular consumer debt, shopping and car loans, because through that house purchase, by taking up that mortgage, you actually have the possibility to build equity in your home in the long run, stress in the long run. But if you go into debt, buying things that quickly lose value over time, for example, expensive trips, cars, shopping, etc., then that will stand in your way of building wealth. And to avoid it in the first place, I simply refer you back to step number one, which is spend less than you earn. I know it sounds first grade, but in reality, it's not as easy to pull off. Start looking into your expenses, set up a target budget, and make the hard decisions you know that you need to do to start building wealth and you'll be on your way. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget if you're looking for a trading platform to invest on then don't forget to check out Mumu. My referral link is down in the descriptions below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye!